So, this is the semi-final of the Glasgow Regional that was six months ago. So, I'm just going to get on with it because I put it off for too long now. This is going to be against Joseph Richardson. Of course, it's going to be against Joseph Richardson. So, he's going to be using Big Six. Now, I played him once in Wakefield and lost. And I faced him in the International Challenge that he came first in and I beat him. So, I'm going to lead with the lead that I beat him with, which was Gengar and Kyogre. But he is going to switch to Xerneas Smeagol, which isn't the best for me. Now, I told everyone on my report that in the Xerneas Smeagol matchup, you taunt the Xerneas. Because at this point, all the Smeagols had fake out follow me. So it, either they fake out the thing that wasn't the Gengar and you stop the Geomancy, or they follow me and you taunt the Smeagol. They get the Geomancy, but then they're useless. So he's going to make the play that I say that no one ever makes. No one ever protects in Dark Voids. But he did. And it was a very good play. So my Gengar is going to go to sleep. My Sizzle does have the Lumberry, but I dodge it apparently, so there we go. So I, that's pretty much all I, I can remember that about the match. Because I am still going into this blind, but I do remember that he makes the play that no one makes because I told everyone that that's what I do. So I should, probably still should have taunted the Smeagol to mix things up. But he is going to get his Geomancy, but because he missed my Sizzle, I can get Swords Dance now. Did he follow me? I, was, I wasn't paying attention. I was just going through the spiel of how he made a good play, which was bad for me. But there we go, there's a Geomancy. I'm assuming I saw his dance because I didn't bullet punch. So, you should be seeing that. What is he going to go for another Dark Void? Okay, so he's going for Dark Void. He didn't go for Follow Me. I should start paying attention. Especially when I'm actually playing the match, but there we go. Okay, this is the Gengar avoided, but I am going to burn my Lumberry now, but he can follow me away my bullet punches, which is not so good. But that is the Swords Dance, yeah. So, the Xerneas will be KO to a bullet punch, but Smeagol can follow me. So I protect and taunt. That would make the most sense. Ooh, speed rise. That's good for me, because then he can't dart void my Gengar if it wakes up. So, yeah, protect and taunt. Wake up, wake up! You better wake up, Gengar, because you only live one of them, because you're Sash. You live anyway, but... Doesn't gleam. If I wake up, I'm in a really good position, because he's definitely going to protect Xerneas, and then I can bullet punch the Smeagol as it switches. Am I going to wake up? No! Oh, that's awful. So, yeah, I was almost certainly taunting the Smeagol there, and then I was in a, an amazing position, but now he can just follow me, and I can't stop that. So this is not looking good anymore. Yep, there's the follow me. I should still be bullet punching. Yep, I am bullet punching. So Smeagol's going to be brought to its sash. Yep, with a critical hit. I don't think it got any defense raises, but... It wouldn't really have mattered anyway because of the Sash. The Dazzling Gleam is going to knock out my Gengar and do just under half to my Sizzle because that's what it's EV to survive. So, what would I have? I would have Ray and Kyogre in the back. So, I should bring in my Ray, Extreme Speed, the Smeagol, and Bullet Punch, the Xerneas. Yeah, there's the Ray. Okay, so not the worst, not the worst. This is going to be very readable. Ah, no, no, I know what happens. Because. I was going to sword stance again because the Xerneas Protect was very obvious. Because I can just bullet punch at an extreme speed. Like, that makes so much sense for me. And I was going to sword stance, but then I actually psyched myself out of this play because I knew that Joseph. Well, I didn't know that Joseph would think this, but I thought that Joseph would know that I would go for the sword stance. Because that's. Like, those are the kind of plays I make. So I actually bullet punch expecting him to expect me to sword stance, or expect me to bullet punch. So I sword stance. So. I think I bullet punch, yeah. And that is not good for me because he can intimidate me with his Salamence in the back. He's going to bring in Talonflame and now he can quick guard. But I would have been able to just... Actually, no. Hmm. Because if I had a Swords Dance again, he, yeah, he can quick guard. And my Ray... No, I'd have to sack my Ray, then knock out the Talonflame with my Kyogre. That's what's going to happen. Yeah, so Ray goes down. So I don't think I... Ex I did Extreme Speed, didn't I? But then he did quick guard, so... Kyogre will come in. Oh, now I need to get a double protect, actually. Yeah, because the Kyogre... It can't... I think it... No, it couldn't take 2,000 Gleams based on the previous one. So am I going to go for the double protect? Yeah. I think I think this is the play where I make the double protect play. Yes, I do, and I get it. Because the protect Xerneas and um, Brave Bird, the Scizor, made a lot of sense for him. Because I just protected. So I do get to take out the Talent Flame. So that was my best play. That that was really nice. But if I had sword danced on the turn that I psyched myself out, I would have probably won. Because he's going to bring in his Salamence now. That intimidates my, my Scizor. 
and I can't knock out the Xerneas without a crit now, because I would have been able to clean up, because he protected, unless he got a double protect, I would have been able to bullet punch the Xerneas and Ice Beam for the win. So, that was a shame. Because, like, I, w I was so close to going for the Swords Dance, and I just expected him to expect me to Swords Dance, because I make those plays, but... There we go, Bullet Punch is not going to knock out, because it's not a crit, I got intimidated. Dazzling Gleam won't knock out the Scissor or the Kyogre, but Hyper Voice definitely will knock out the Scissor. And I can't knock out both, because I don't. if I'd have run Origin Pulse and maybe crit the Salamence, I don't think that even knocks out, but I haven't run Origin Pulse once, because I hate the move. But I am going to Water Spout. It's, gonna, it's maybe going to knock out the Xerneas. Well, it doesn't even. Just like in the Swiss rounds, it just doesn't knock out the Xerneas, just to add insult to injury, but the game was over anyway. Because the Salamence would have been able to clean up with the Hyper Voice or a Double Edge, whichever one it wanted, but that was really close. If I had gone for the Swords Dance, I would have won, won there, but I still had to rely on the Double Protect with the Sizzle, which I did get, so I should have played to my Wing Con a little bit more. I guess I expected maybe the Groudon in the back instead of the Salamence, but that doesn't really make sense because it's against Rayoga, so yeah, if I had a Swords Dance, that would have been clutch, but I lose game one. Let's try and win game two, so. What am I going to change it up? So he's going to go with that Smiggle, isn't it? Because that's Chris Brown. And Townflame, what do I lead? That's Raichu and Gengar. Mm, okay. So I leave Scizor out this time, unless they left that out one of the restricted. So that's quite interesting. Switch out to stop the Taunt, I guess. That would make sense. So I can Volt Tackle the Talonflame. That would still be a KO. Now, do I fake out the Talonflame? Because we could be quick guarding. Oh, faint. Okay. Oh, I'm just going to try and take out the Smiggle straight away, aren't I? Okay. That would make sense. Sludge Bomb won't KO the Salamence, though. Tailwind is nice from him. Oh, it's just Faint and Torn. That's not very good. If I was going for that play, I really should have Sludge Bombed. That's not good. But now he's got his Salamence in with relatively low damage. So he switch out, switches out his Talonflame to, um, from potential Volt Tackle. So this Smiggle can take that with its Sash. Now, he can't knock out either of my Pokemon with just his Salamence. Apart from a Dracorn to the Raichu, actually. That would make sense. I should, I should be Icy Winding, though. Hyper Voice, that breaks the sash of my Gengar. So, Icy Wind plus a Nuzzle. Sludge Bomb into the Talonflame. That's, this This is not good. So, I bring it down to the sash. Do I get the poison? Ooh, that would be clutch. No. Nuzzle onto the Salamence. Okay, that, that's acceptable, actually. Because Sludge Bomb would probably knock out the Talonflame, and that paralyzes the Salamence for the Ice Beam in the back with the Kyogre. So, that actually makes sense, I think. And the Smiggle is in faint range now, so... Would he just sack it? Would he let me just knock it out? Looks like he might be. Because Salamence would be slower because of the paralysis, so I should be fainting the Smeagol here. And the Sludge Bomb would be clutch, but Icy Wind is probably what more likely what I'm going to be going for. So I'm going to knock out the Smeagol. Ah, oh, Sludge Bomb would have been the play, but I bet I Icy Wind. Oh, I Skill Swap. That's even worse. Oh, no. I was trying to take away the Area Lake so he couldn't knock out my Gengar, I guess, but that's not so good. Because Icy Wind's single target would have knocked him out. I really should, like, even Icy Wind was better. Sludge Bomb was obviously the best play, but still, Icy Wind was better than Skill Swap. That wasn't so good. Now, Brave Bird can knock out either of my Pokemon. Which one is he going to decide to? Because he does outspeed it. Should, yeah. On to Raichu, and then he shouldn't Geomancy here. Because he doesn't really... Well, actually, no. Because Tailwind's going to run out, so he actually he should. Because he'll survive a Sludge Bomb. So is he going to Geomancy or just knock out my Gengar? Yeah, he's just attacking. Okay, so that should knock out Gengar a single target as well. Yeah, definitely going to. But now, he doesn't have his Fairy Aura. That's something. And he's not geomancy So not the worst. Definitely could have been better. Like, I didn't play very well with my Gengar in this game at all, it seems. So... And because the Tailwind just ended, he can set it up again this turn. So he can protect Tailwind. Now, do I want to just Water Spout? Because then he gets switched back into... Actually, no. That, that would be quite reasonable, actually. Because I, no, I don't outspeed the Xerneas at the moment, because they were all timid back then, so. I almost need to protect my Ray, but he can just Tailwind. But I should be Water Spouting. But it's just awkward with the Ray. Because I can protect, but then he can Tailwind, so I should attack. Okay, that's Protect on the Xerneas. Okay, so. Is he going to Brave Bird my Ray? Oh, extreme speed. So I do I do attack. Does that knock out Talonflame? It might at that range. Oh, that was so close. If that had knocked out, actually, I think I won. Because I could have knocked out the Salamence because it was paralyzed. And I got the speed boost by Mega Ring. 
Okay, so that does a lot of damage. So he, t well, he takes himself out with the Tunnel Flame, actually. But that damage was, was crucial. Because now I can't knock out the Xerneas. I did go for Scold. I didn't go for Water Spout. Interesting. But now an Ice Beam will knock out Salamence. But I need to double target the Xerneas to knock it out. But he can just Moonblast. No, actually, he can just Dazzle and Gleam and he wins. Hmm. Yeah, I need to double target into the Xerneas because that's just not going to knock it out. So... It's a roll on no bulk ones, but the tiniest bulk guarantees the survival. So I should water spout here. Dazzling Gleam's going to knock out my Ray, and I need to bank on the Paralysis. So, yeah, that's what it comes down to now. Because I should be spouting. Because I can't afford to not knock out the Xerneas this turn. It's just Scald, okay. Well, that that's fine as well, because water spout wasn't going to knock out the Salamence anyway. And I need the Paralysis for the Ice Beam. So, am I going to get it? Nah, he gets through. So, that's me out of the tournament. And it turns out that the final couldn't happen because the semi uh, the finalist, Lee Provost, had to go home because of his, his train times. He couldn't compete in the final, so Joseph just went on to win the regional by default. So, it, this was effectively the final. So, whoever won this became the regional champion, even though this was the semi-final. So, that was close. Like... The first first match, if I'd have Source Dance again with Sizzle, I would have won that. In this game, I really did not play well with my Gengar. Like, this, like I guess the first two turns made sense, but that skill swap was oh, not a good play. Icy Wind or Sludge Bomb was definitely better. Like Icy Wind made the most sense given what was on the field. And actually, because he didn't Geomancy in the end, I would have outsped with my Kyogre and I would have won. So Icy Wind was the best play. So that's that's a little bit disappointing looking looking back at that because that was such an easy improvement to make. So just changing one move on both Pokemon would have won me this effectively won me this tournament, which is a shame looking back. But yeah, so it's it's funny as well. The two tournaments in VGC 16 that I get um, top cuts from the coming first and third. My only losses were against Joseph Richardson. I lost against him in Swiss in Wakefield. I lost against him in Swiss in Glasgow, and in the semi-final of Glasgow, uh, semi-final Glasgow as well. So that's that's quite interesting that he was the only person that, that managed to beat me in the regionals. But I get my revenge at nationals. You you already know that. <laughs> that that was a much better game for me, and yeah. So. That was the end of this this regional run. I've only got one more left. I've got the... I'm going to say Paris because it's, it's Longjumeau, but that's probably wrong. So I'm going to be saying Paris for it, even though it was just outside of Paris. So just that left, and then after that's all uploaded, it will be time for Worlds. So got that to look forward to. Thanks for watching.